Okay, guys, listen up, please. Listen up. Now, you let yourselves down massively last time out in France. And unless you're planning on beating Barcelona or winning in Germany, this is your last chance to keep the European dream alive in the new year. It's now or it's never. Well, you may not be that bothered, McCallum, but the rest of us aren't off to Turkey in the new year. I'm Ozzy Villain and welcome back to Queen of the South. It's season six, episode seven on the Impossible Dream as we try and win the Champions League with our Scottish club. And today we have a game in the league against Hibs. And then we have a massive game in the Champions League at home to Rennes. It was massively disappointing last time out losing to them in France, having previously beaten the defending champions uh, at home in RB Leipzig. So if we want to be in Europe after Christmas, we need to be winning today's game. Uh, if for no other reason than to make sure that the head-to-head -head is, is in our favour. So that is what we have ahead of us. Now, there was a request in the comments uh, to see, and I figured if one person wants to see it, usually more than one person is interested. And I'm interested, to be honest, as well and to see how the uh the annual wage spend and sponsorship money is sh is uh, shaping up so you can see here we start with the salary annually this is celtic are uh, just absolutely light years ahead of uh, rangers rangers the light year of everybody else and we're down there in fifth spending an absolute smidgen of what uh, the two uh, old firm teams we're spending half of what hibs are spending who we're playing as i said today so we are doing a very, very good job indeed to be uh, to be competing where we are, given the wage that we're spending. Now we have a look here at uh, the sponsorship income as well. You can see where uh, well we're sixth in this one. I mean Ross County is ahead of us. We need to, we need uh, what is his name Ed Woodward or someone in to get some sponsorship money into this club, don't we? Hibs should really be the third team in this in this league, shouldn't they? It's third in the in uh, sponsorship. They're right up there in the wage spend. And uh, they're just massively underachieving, aren't they? But us, on the other hand, are doing a decent job. And Aberdeen all the way down there at the bottom. Where were they in the wage spend? Yeah, I mean, it's it's behind us. We, I mean, we are spending a little bit more than... Well, we're spending a lot more, let's be honest, than those below us. So we are roughly... Yeah, we're, we're doing a good job, aren't we? But we, I wouldn't say anybody below us there is... Uh, Anyway, I'm getting distracted. There's one, <laughs> there's one game to catch you up on since last episode. That was in the league against Dundee. We can see they spend, uh, we can, I guess they're 10th in the wage spend. So let's go see how we did against them. We fell behind early. Davenport shot fell for Shakir Omar to draw us level. And Bermudez put us ahead at half time. Bermuda the second gave us a 3-1 lead. Before Bermuda has completed his hat trick in style. So a slow start in this one, but we responded really, really well to falling behind. Bermudez had one of those games that makes you think, oh, maybe I don't want to sell him. <laughs> um, yeah, he, I mean, he was absolutely magnificent. And everybody else around him, did a good job so if we have a quick look at what that means for the league table we can see we are still in second rangers actually lost a game to aberdeen so that's huge for us well we just need to consolidate ourselves now in that top three don't we and just and just make sure that uh when they others slip up that we're there to take advantage of it and you can see the champions league table there we have to win we have to win today there's just no way around it but let's have a look at what we're doing here first up against hibs there's the other fixtures celtic at home to motherwell you'd expect a win there and rangers aren't playing and uh oh, there's the scottish cup ties this is what we're expecting from hibs it's a 4-4-2 of a 4 4 one, one formation and this is the team that we're sending out. Obviously, we need to focus on the Ren game. So it's Eastwood in goal. It's Ramos, Vital, Hamilton, and Gilchrist as the back four. McPherson, Goss, and Thompson in midfield. Harding in behind, McGrath and Clockety. As a reminder, Suljic is injured. He's not fit yet. He's, uh, he's going to be missing this episode. That is why... Well, we've got McGrath in there, and because he's up there, it means Goss has to come in here. And it's all just a little bit of a mess, if I'm honest. And the bench... It's not the strongest. All right, so we can see the team sheets there. Uh, yeah, the, the reason the, the bench is like that is we've sort of had that situation where we're playing midweek weekend, midweek weekend, and we've been doing that for several weeks now. And the, the big tip play is they just need a break. That there's That's just the situation that we're in. Uh, let's ignore the praise. Let's go out there and have some fun as always. Let's pump our fists. Let's go out there and do it for the queen. All right, and here we go. 
I mean, the first team is relatively strong. The, the weakness, without a doubt, is up front with McGrath and Clockety. I'm hoping that we'll be able to muster something together up front. And, I mean, the defense is, is relatively solid. So, yeah, we just need to... We, this is one of those games we just need to get the three points and move on. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of these, again, where I, I would love... To, I would love to say a draw is enough, but we know that when we we're playing against Rangers and Celtic, they just don't drop points that often. Ramos is looking nervous at left back. I wonder if I should have been a little bit more demanding of them in the pre-game team talk. Let's see what we can do here. Can we win this ball back? As of yet, the answer to that question is no, of course. Gilchrist put some pressure on, but still, Hibs have possession. They go all the way back to their goalkeeper. And they try again. You can see we're trying to put pressure on them high up the pitch. There's the ball over the top. Only Gilchrist read it, so that's nice. We have possession now. Can we build and go from the back? Vital to Thompson. Forward for McGrath. McGrath does well. McPherson's got a little bit of space. He finds Gilchrist and even more space. Where's Clockety in the middle? We go short to McGrath instead. Where's Clockety? Oh, it's a penalty. A silly, silly tackle. Now, who's going to take it? Is it going to be Goss? No, it's McGrath. McGrath, actually, he was quite good from the spot a couple of seasons ago, wasn't he? I think he got double digits. Can he put this one away? Yes, he can. And we have taken a first-half lead at Easter Road, and we needed to go in front in this game, didn't we? Hopefully now that'll give us a little bit of confidence, and we can, uh, we can just look to go on with this. Really good penalty from McGrath. Let's give them some praise. And, well, can we get a quick fire one, too? That would be perfect, wouldn't it? Oh, no. McPherson, Gilchrist have clocked off for a second. Eastwood is there. It's bouncing around. If we can clear it, please. And everybody breathe. Yeah, I mean, Ramos playing a 6-5 on a booking is not... It's suboptimal, let's say. He's now playing a 6-4. Um, let's give it a focus. The issue we have is Mitch... Oh, I know who can move back there is Thompson. Thompson can play left back. Thompson could play left back. One of Dunn, Hardy, or Razayev could come into midfield. And that would be absolutely fine. So let's, uh, well, let's say don't get complacent. Hasn't really worked, has it? All right. He's looking nervous. Let's, you've got the ability to make the difference. Go and prove it. That didn't work. Let's pump our fists and... See if we can win others back. I'm wondering if it's not Ramos's day. One thing I have noticed about Ramos, actually, is that if you tell him you expect to win, he responds a lot better to that than otherwise. Uh, let's give it a little bit of time here. Let's see if he can turn it around in the second half. Let's try to demand more. He's still nervous. So I don't think I don't think we need to mess around with that, do we? So we'll make the change. The question is, who do we want to come on in midfield? Um, probably Razayev, don't we? Yeah, I think we want Razayev to come on in midfield. And we might switch Goss out into a wider position. And that is all good with me. If we can defend properly. Vital has really impressed me. He just is going to do something stupid now, isn't he? Goss with a corner. Back post. It is there. And it is Jamie Hamilton with a first, possibly of the club's history, or time at the club, I should say. And it is. I don't remember him getting any before. So Hamilton at the back post is there. It is 2-0. But yeah, you know, I was saying, Vettel has really impressed me. He is, he's come in and he, he just always seems to play well. He's just one of those defenders that appears to be rock solid at all times. Here comes the Vettel error. <laughs> but yeah, he's he has done he has done quite well, which is good. Uh, it's a bit of a nothing ball forward. Can we put a little bit of pressure on them here? Please and thank you. There's a ball straight through the middle. Vital stands looking at him. And Michael of a Fumway, who has scored against us not for the first time there, a 50th goal of his career. And yeah, it is Vital. <laughs> of course it is, that has uh, let him go there. I wonder if, having seen that, if we sit a little bit deeper. 
They were just waiting for us there, weren't they? And then put the ball over the top. So let's try that. Uh, let's give it a focus. Apparently, left back is just where all the nerves of the team decide to live. It's a bit of a shame that goal, because I was just thinking maybe we could bring on some of these young midfielders, or even Callum Reed, the young striker, to give them some game time. But give them some praise, see if we can... No, we can't. It's turning into an even game, isn't it? Certainly in terms of shots. And our XG, of course, was boosted by the fact we had a penalty. We just need to see this out now. If we could get a second goal, that would be good. They've changed. We need to change our marking. All right, so we've done that. I wonder if we start and close this thing down as well. Something I've been trying to do is work ball into space and just see if it, it helps us a little bit. Oh, we've got to... Uh, for set pieces, so slow it down, make it a bit more difficult for them. Hopefully, just see this out. Like I said at the start, at the start, we just need to get the three points, and that's what we've done. So I am got zero complaints about that. Uh, don't get complacent. I'm not doing good team talks recently. So there we go. It was an important win. It puts the pressure on Rangers now as well. They're five points back of us. But there we go, in control as they are brushed aside. That's a bit harsh on them, I've got to say. Uh, but guys, wait right there. It is arguably the game of the series so far. We've got to beat Ren to stay in Europe. We'll have a chance of staying in Europe. So let's see if we can do it. Okay, welcome back. Now, you can see that the kids have uh, lost to Ren. Let's hope that's not uh, foretelling what's happened to the first team. Uh, I mean, it's a tough group, isn't it, for our kids to be drawn in. So, uh, yeah, they've got a point out of it. And to be honest, that's that's probably the best they could have hoped for. Uh, but let's hope we can do a little bit better than that. Let's have a look here what we're expecting. Uh, we're expecting a 4-2-3-1 formation from them. And this is the team that we're sending out. It's Eastwood in goal. It's McCallum Walker, Bernard and Montano. It's Bayless, Davenport and Irving, Bermudez in behind, Shakir Omar and Lutzi. You can see there's a few heavy workloads amongst the players, but this is our biggest game of the season. We have to make sure that, uh, that the best players are out there. All right, so we can see the team sheets. That's the goalkeeper. We had a couple of worldies in the first game at their place. Uh, it looks like a very familiar-ish. Uh, Aspilicueta is there. He must be, what do we see, six seasons in? He must... How old is Aspilicueta now? He must be 40. Um... All right, what do we want to say to this? Maybe it's a different Aspilicueta. Surely not, though. Let's let's go out there and play our natural game. Let's not get drawn into anything that involves pressure. Let's just go out there and score some goals for the fun of it. And it... <clears throat> <laughs> already getting choked up. And here we go. Oh, this is huge, isn't it? Uh, the other game, obviously, is Barcelona versus Red Bull. I think it's in Spain, so or uh, Catalonia. But for six years in the future, it could be anything, couldn't it? Uh, so let's hope that Barcelona do us a favour. If they can do that, if we can win here, then you never know what could happen. But we just want to make sure we're in the Europa League, don't we? Now, how old is Aspilicueta? Let's have a quick look at this here. Aspilicueta is 37. Very, very slow. I wonder if we could take advantage of that. Shakir, go and get Aspilicueta, mate. Give them some encouragement. We've got a highlight. It's Montano with a throw. Davenport back to Montano. There's the cross in. It's Lutzi at the back post. Shakir Omar can't quite get to the rebound. And that ends the highlight. But promising. They haven't scored twice in a minute inside 10 minutes. <laughs> We're already doing better than we did in France. Oh, come on. It would be so disappointing to uh, be completely out of Europe, wouldn't it? But that's obviously, I mean, in a way, if we can go into the Champions League group stage and not get eliminated, well, you know, that's almost a success in itself. So, yeah. Now, the reason we need to win this, of course, is we need to have the head-to-head -head over Ren. So if we win 1-0, I think... We have scored one away from home, and that would mean we have the better head-to-head. -head. I don't actually know. Bermudez over a free kick. Can he channel his inner Dundee game? Bermudez. Oh, it's just over. It always looked like it was going over, didn't it? And is it going to be 1-0 at half time? One more encouragement. And it's looking as though that might be the case, doesn't it? Seven shots, only one on target. 
that probably tells the story for us, doesn't it? So let's uh, you play without pressure. Let's let's not let's not put pressure on ourselves. We've got faith in you. If we can just go and uh, and get ourselves a goal from somewhere, please. What do we want to change here? Do we need to change anything? They are uh, well. We saw it in the first game. We're just playing a little bit more cautiously, perhaps. I'm wondering if maybe we want to lower the tempo down and and look for our fullbacks, maybe a touch more. Look, he's having a good game. So is Bayless. Nobody else is really shining though. Let's give them some more encouragement. And Davenport is not playing particularly well. There's a ball. Oh, it's a penalty. I think it's going to be a penalty. Walker has gone down. And, well, it's surely a penalty. If the ref has stopped play, it's got to be a penalty, does it not? Who's going to take it? Will it be Omar? It's Bermudez. Oh, he's so inconsistent. Please, please, Bermudez. He's done it. Omar Bermudez makes it 1-0 early in the second half. That is huge. Davenport, oh, I almost want to lead him on now as a more defensively minded player. I was going to bring Sonny Harding on for him. But he is he is the more defensively minded of the two. We'll give them some praise. That puts us second. Barcelona are indeed beating RB Leipzig. If this result can hold, I don't actually know. I'll have to check the head-to-head -head how it would uh, play out between the two of us. Or we could just go and get a second and win 2-0 and know what's going to happen. Look, is he onside? Back for Bermudez. Oh, Omar Bermudez. He has showed up big time in the Champions League. He's got himself a second. We are now 2-0 up. We'll stop attacking them. And, well, this is turning into a massive, massive night. Well, not in, not in Dumfries, are we? I think we're in Motherwell. But either way, it's turning into a massive night. Lutzi did well. They didn't go with Bermudez. And the goalkeeper that made two worldies in France has got nowhere near that. He's no match for Omar in this form. Maybe Paris Saint-Germain did uh, were onto something when they tried to sign him in the summer. He's over that, by the way. They were not interested anymore, so he's not uh, displeased or anything that we haven't sold him. So that's obviously excellent news for us. Shakir Omar isn't having the greatest game. I'm wondering if we just save his legs in that case. We'll get uh, Clockety on. Let's try him as a complete forward. I do ideally want Clockety to turn into that sort of player. Uh, how old is Clockety now? 18. So there's still lots and lots of time for him to develop. We've got a corner. Irving. Back post. It is bouncing around. Oh, and it's found its way back into the goalkeeper's hands. We've got another free kick. Can we get a third goal? What we don't want is for them to get back to 2-1. And then, well, then I don't know what happens if uh, we end up joint on points. Ball forward. McCallum down to Irving. Back to McCallum. To Lutzi. Can Lutzi goes back to McCallum again. Clockety is lurking. We know he's strong in the air. Bermudez on a hat trick. Oh, and he's missed it. It was probably the easiest chance, including the penalty. It was the easiest chance of the three, and he's missed it. But we are playing down into stoppage time. We've absolutely smashed them. Our XG was four. We scored two. That's enough to give us a win. The head-to-head, -head, the Champions League money. It gives us the, the uh, coefficient points as well. And unless Ren can go and beat RB Leipzig or Barcelona, we will be in European football after Christmas. So... Having stuffed up in France, we've rescued ourselves back home. And of course, the other big news there is that Barcelona have indeed done the double over uh, RB Leipzig, which makes you wonder if we could, if we could have beaten Rennes or even taken a point against Rennes uh, in that game in France, we would be in a very strong position to even get out of the group. But as it stands, unless Rennes can beat RB Leipzig and Barcelona or take four points from those two games, we will be in Europe after Christmas. And it's unlikely, surely, they're not going to go and do that. So, and of course, we've got a big game now against RB Leipzig, where if we can draw that, having got the head-to-head, -head, of course, we, we beat them. So if we draw them in Germany, we'll have the head-to-head -head over them, and we will have guaranteed ourselves getting out of this group. And that would be absolutely massive. So that'll be next episode. We've got a semi-final against Celtic in the Betfred, and then we will be back to face RB Leipzig in a do-not-lose, and we're in the last 16 of the Champions League.
Oh, that would be huge, wouldn't it? Anyway, guys, if you've enjoyed that, thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time. Take care.